Uh, as of this recording right now, I did put an application for one of the apartments. I got approved for the application. They sent me over the lease and it's like fucking 60 pages long. We have been hunting furiously throughout New York City for the new headquarters. If you are new here and you're like, what the fuck you talking about new headquarters? I call my apartment the headquarters. This is my personal studio. This is where I create my content. This is where I've created everything we got here. We are looking to move into a studio in Manhattan. Get one place that could serve as my apartment, as my studio. Plus I fucking love Manhattan. So I have been shopping furiously. Oh. Building is gonna commence. I don't know about a whole fucking whatever the fuck this thing is called. I feel like a woman compared to animal when it comes to all these tools and shit. Woo! We are fucking fine. Now the headquarters is up and running. This is what it's gonna look like all the time. Studio up here. We got fucking snacks recording a podcast. I just got off recording. We're gonna build a table soon. Animal missing shots left and right. I'm not sure how wide it was. I might have got you in the background making that. I don't think I've ever seen that What's cracking, big dog? Welcome back to the headquarters. This is the Fade the Public podcast. My name is Nicholas. That is Animal. That is Snacks. I told y'all we'd have a table. Uh, we are still obviously in the midst of building the table. Mid construction. Yeah, it'll it'll be very very beautiful when we're finally done with building it. Toss it out to you, like one piece at a time. <laughs> I'm talking to the guy now. What's the plan? Fill the bodies in the bag. There are no bodies. Just be clear, there's no bodies. That's that. We're all done. Well done, that's it. We're all here anymore. I don't know if this is like okay. Whatever. I'll go get from the dollars out here. Yeah, that's what I was say. Good dollar, let's just throw them all on a dollar and then like I'll just call it out. Get in there nice and crispy. Oh yeah. Hit the right spot right there. So what bear claws look like. It's not even tight, but no, this is like not gonna work. It's like a terrible idea with the string. Yeah. I don't know why he's like so obsessed with it. He just knows a ticket is incoming. I'm 100% gonna have to pay like a $200 ticket no matter how we dispose of this. It's a business expense, tax write off. We just gotta do the little ones now. Just put all the little ones on, put like one little piece of rope on it so it looks like it's tied when we walk past them and then we just throw them out individually after. Yeah, well, I can just tie them all together right now, like these three. Mm -hmm. well,
Rest in peace. Rest in the public. I got a mask on. Yeah. Uh, what about the table? <laughs> this we put the top there too. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. What a fucking choice. Yeah. Yeah. We can. We can put it on the thing. Yeah, I could probably put it. animal out. R.I.P. So, came back to my old stomping grounds. We're in, uh, we're in Williamsburg right now in Brooklyn because Bronson basically announced on his Instagram, he's like, yeah, we're doing a, a Fuck That Silicious pop-up shop. Um, in Williamsburg and, he, and the place that he was doing it at is called Linda Street. It's the most banging pizza spot in Brooklyn. And uh, it was the pizza place that was closest to my old apartment in Williamsburg. So I'm like, one. Um, my, my Euro step needs a little work. Uh, the pizza's fucking phenomenal. It's my favorite place in New York probably for pizza. So I'm like, cool, we can go get some za. Maybe we'll see Action Bronson. He said the pop-up shop starts at noon. We get there and the line, it's like, it's like wrapped around the first block. I'm like, oh shit, this is long. Get to the corner, wrapped around the second block. I'm like, it's gonna take 17 hours for us to get through the line. So now we're just gonna go uh, creep on the line, maybe interview some people, heckle people, see if we can cut the line. I have a feeling we're gonna be very unsuccessful. It feels good to be back in Williamsburg though. This is my, my old uh, apartments, like two, two stores now. Fucking Action Bronson, man. This happened to me last year, too. He did a pop-up at an ice cream place. Just fucking 100 people there. He was too high, so he couldn't stay that long. It was just L. I took the L train here. Very, very uh, reminiscent of of, uh, of our day so far. That's it. Wow, they really did open up this place. This place was, like, super small. I don't know if you can see it in there. Oh, you'll see him walk out. Who else pulling up in a fucking Rolls Royce truck besides Bronsolino, young Baklava? Don't you beep at fucking Action Bronson. Imagine you just got out and kicked that dude's fucking ass. Do it. 
This line's gonna fucking explode if it's in. Do it. I might go run up and hug him, and bear hug him. That's definitely a security guard. Or maybe he's just a really big dude that wants pizza and no one's gonna say nothing to him. Damn, we should have got here at like 8 a.m. I blame you for this. Does it? It's a Wednesday. Why are you yelling? Like post up at one of these seats? Can we? I have no idea. We might as well try. You think he's going to a different pizzeria now? Yeah. He's like, you guys are packed. How am I going to eat today? You'd have thought they opened up like a fucking brothel or something. Like an older CC Sabathia when he lost his juice, stopped working out and he like shriveled down. Right? Tell me it don't look like CC. That might actually be CC. Facts, right? I don't know. Who's, uh, He's CC. wearing Yankees gear. Like, Dude, that straight up might be CC. I, I, no lie, I think that is. I think it is too. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he just came to chill and hang out with Action Bronson. Bronson hasn't actually came up yet. Dude, that that's, that, that, that's, that's 100% CC Sabathia. What a call by me who likes <laughs> baseball more than you. Oh, Bronson's in there. He's right there. Oh shit, he's already, so we were waiting yeah. for CeCe this whole time. Yeah, I didn't realize he was pulling up. Yeah, you can see his bald head right there. Yo, honestly, let's go creep over these people. Katy Perry's inside too. This is just a, a weird orgy of celebrities inside. I wonder how these things come together. I think Bronson's like really good friends with the, uh, with the owner of this place. They kind of like remind me of each other. I used to talk to him sometimes when I lived around here. It's just like this thick Italian dude. This thick Italian dude. Uh, all they care about is food. They only believe in two things, themselves and food. We should have came at 6 a.m. Camped out. I want a slice of this pizza so bad. Oh shit, he got the same. He was here since 8 a.m. How early are you here? 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Then I was here. Oh, I was just here. You're dedicated. What was it? Just like a meet and greet? What do you think of the meet and greet? Can we get you uh, on camera taking that first bite? Huh? Can we get you on camera oh, taking that first bite? Hell yeah. Hold on, just make the scene better. What's your name? Steven. Steven or Nick? Good. You, too. you from the hood? From Williamsburg? I'm from Jersey. Ah, well, I'm technically, I guess, from both. I'm from Jersey, too, originally. Where at? I'm from Newark. All right, we're, I'm up in, I was up in Bergen County. Oh, Bergen County? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I moved to Williamsburg. Yeah. Actually, so, my apartment's, so, like, right there. Yeah. Boom. What's so, on that thing? So you want mouth open, or you want just Whatever you want, man. Whatever you, Whatever you want. Don't let us fuck up your vibe. You about to cry? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Finish the line. Finish that line. Fuck. That's fucking delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Number one in line right here. 8 a.m. It's dedication. Are you like a diehard Action Bronson fan? Diehard. Fuck okay. yeah. Diehard. Favorite, favorite bar from Bronson? I might not be able to touch my toes, but I can still fuck them so. <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah. Wow. You come by yourself? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry. It's all good. It's all good. We'll cut that part out. Enjoy, yeah. We'll come over here. That's amazing. We show up at 11.45 acting like we're about to get a sandwich here. I wonder how many of them they made. Probably like... I'm waiting for my girl. That's yeah. Fine. Probably like 20 of them. What's that? This is a uh, uh, tiramisu. Tiramisu? Tiramisu. I feel like we got to get this man some napkins. 
<laughs> so fucking good, bro. No, no. Cap. I'm about to let you wipe on me. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. <laughs> Walking down and seeing everyone stare at me, and I'm like, why is everyone staring at me? And I realize you're falling. <laughs> Vlog squad, I am. Like, yo, we're making a video for Bob. Hop out of line real quick and we take this. <laughs> actually built a brand until you have a line like that waiting for you around the corner. These BDG aspirations. If we don't want to open up a Lindustry pop-up shop in the next 10 years, file bankruptcy. You're all fucking fired. I hate when people use this phrase. It's a fucking vibe. That street corner is a big fucking vibe. This is my old apartment right here, 146. Up top, you see it falling apart. Oh, 
Joe's Pizza, staple of New York. One thing though, they're like one of the places that stays open really late. So like when you go on DoorDash and you're like, oh, let's get some za and all the other places have abandoned you and it's like McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, you see Joe's Pizza, you're like, fuck yeah. When you get it delivered though, it's not the same Joe's. It's like Joseph's Pizza, it turns real quick on you. You get them fresh though, the margarita slices at Joe's, some of the best za in New York City. Anything margarita, we rate. Drinks, food, women named margarita. Not in a sexual or objective way, just you know, all around good person personality rating. I don't think I've ever actually met someone named margarita before. I'm gonna name my daughter margarita, or your son. Put that on a margarita, yeah. <laughs> with these key tips for new indoor plant owners. First, take a deep breath and relax. Owning plants should be relaxing and fun. It's neither of those. Most new plant owners think plant care is complicated. It is time consuming, but that has more to do with luck than with skill. None of this is true. Let's get to the fucking point. Tip one, get to know your plant. This is fucking ridiculous. Every plant. Most important thing to remember is don't overwater your plant. Mm. That's why I feel like all my plants have died before. Oh, look at the floor. What am I doing? What are you doing? I think I made a huge mistake. You're so... Is this supposed to be like this? Look at over here. Get on the ground over here. Get in there nice and deep. Plant has a brown cocoa fiber mat. Remove and dispose. What the? F what is a brown cocoa fiber mat? Could not tell you. They expect a first time plant father to understand what a brown cocoa fiber mat is. I feel like it's one of those things where like if you saw it, you'd be like, oh, that's a brown cocoa fiber mat. We'll keep or remove the wood shavings. Brown cocoa fiber mat. Is that? Is this in a pot? This in... There's no way it stays in this thing, right? No, probably not. This is out of control. Why did they do this to me? Probably should have opened it outside. Where? We got no room. It's Cap it's Captain cool. Hindsight. Ever heard of a fucking vacuum? I really feel like this is maybe the brown cocoa thing. I'm not sure why they like needed to put a cocoa on it for like a flavor, but I don't know if I'm supposed to do this. It just feels right. I'm just doing whatever feels right. I'm, vi I'm vibrating. Yes. Yes. for this fucking life. Where's the care card? This thing's gonna die in like a month. I definitely take the tape off, right? I've never felt dumber in my whole life than how I feel right now. It makes no sense. shavings it's like a very wide range keep or remove tell me what I have to do light your yucca prefers bright indirect light it will tolerate lower light but growth will slow growth I don't want this thing getting any fucking bigger 
water water your yucca when the top 50 to 75 percent of the soil is dry this is not dummy proof the liquid flows through the drainage hole is there a drainage hole at the bottom all right i'm gonna lift this up you gotta let me know if there's a hole at the bottom yep <sighs> Make sure the box is right side up. Open the box and care card, then read it carefully. Slide the inner box out. We did that, just a little messier than what the pictures did. It's like when you go to McDonald's and they show you the quarter pounder with cheese, what it looks like, and then what they actually give you in real fucking life. That's what this is. Bloomscape, you're no better than McDonald's. Open the inner box, remove all packing materials. Sit back, relax, and admire your new plant friend hashtag. Very, very cool, guys. Very cool. Never miss a watering guild. There's even an app to tell you when to water it. It's huge. Well, there you go. Game over. I'm going to be the best fucking dad of all time. What are you going to name your plant? I'm thinking either... I like Ricky. I like... Uh, what about Aladdin? Aladdin? I think we're gonna name it Aladdin. No, we're gonna name it, uh, what's today, the 12th? Yeah. I had to put in the date that I got it. <laughs> Did I get that song stuck in your head? I'm gonna name it Stan. Yeah. Stan? <laughs> it has to be. It's a sign. Any special instructions? I don't know. You're supposed to tell me. What the fuck? does not require much water. Water your yucca cane only when the top 50% of the soil is dry, perhaps every one to two weeks, depending on your indoor climate. Let the water drain through the bottom, empty the saucer of any water, and then allow it to dry out again. This looks promising. It's got a picture that looks just, just like Stan. I think that's enough, I just spread it around. Yeah, just spread the love. Seems like such a simple task, but it's also something very simple to fuck up. People are gonna roast me in the comments. People that, listen, if you're already a fucking plant guy, fuck off. There's nothing I can do. Oh, look how quickly that shit sinks in there. This guy got nothing over there. How does that work? How does like that? Is this supposed to put more water? You got input enough? Nah, you're chilling. I trust you, I don't know. I used to grow plants. Now let's fuck this. <laughs>
and we need to figure out a way of of organizing this so one of our biggest problems is that we don't like we always focus we always talk about focusing on doing more social clips and cutting more social clips up but that always eludes us because the editor's bandwidth is only so large okay so we need to figure out a way to organize it so the editors have more time on their hands and maybe it's assigning an editor to a creator and them to figuring out a system that works together best but we need a way to cut out some of the time that's spent on editing the long form YouTube videos so that the editors can put that time into cutting up social clips. Um, and that's basically what we're getting on the call tonight. I'm not figuring out that out myself. We're just getting the team together so that we know what the focus is going forward. And then Scott's going to take care of all the technical shit and the logistics behind it um, and work closely with the editor so that we know, you know, when you're, when you're running something that's like media based, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes where, someone creates the content, but then you have to upload the content to some kind of cloud, right? Do you use Dropbox, you use Google Drive, whatever. The editor has to take it, download it, which takes time, um, cut it up into what kind of clips. Are we looking for Instagram clips, Twitter clips, uh, TikTok clips? Those all take into account different sizes and pixels and whatever. Um, and then they need to edit it, upload it back to wherever we're doing that, right? And let the creator know that that's uploaded and edited if that person's doing it based off a YouTube video, um, you need to figure out like the thumbnail, you need to figure out the actual editing within the YouTube video. So there's a lot of that shit that goes on that we kind of just like fucking throw shit against the wall and hope that it turns out okay. And uh, if we want to scale this correctly, we need to make sure that the foundation of what we're doing editing wise on that front is uh, secured. So that's what this call is. And um, I hope people show up to my birthday party. Look at this. The whole family's here. <laughs> Why is SP on the same camera? Does Tony just live there now? Yeah. Uh, Tony just walked in and is su super high and hasn't stopped giggling. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> my little guy. Fucking, little fucking creep. That's my kind of guy right there. Don't let him get in his zone, Snacks. No, oh, please. Fuck me. <laughs> Nicole is connecting Nicole. to audio. I was like, wait a second. What's up? You want to join the team? Hey, Nicole. Oh, that's funny. It says Nicole. Yeah. All right, Scott. <laughs> you're supposed to be our fucking leader. Why are you late? Are we actually going to get to see Scott's face on here? Uh, well, oh, well, you will. I, yeah, I forgot true. some of you guys haven't seen Scott before. Yeah. I've only talked to him on the phone. <clears throat> it's Scott, fun to a put nice a voice. face to the picture of the voice. I feel like I'm in an episode of the dysfunctional Brady Bunch right now. <laughs> There's no way Sexy Nicole. Pats makes it out of this call employed. What? I kind of want to like invite the entire Go Fade Me Dynasty League right now. <laughs> do it. Uh, Which I guess makes sense. But and the... edit. I do, yeah. I do literally everything but fucking hey, Scott, look at other people. This is a really good start to your leadership role, showing up set six <laughs> minutes late. Fired. Five minutes late. Yeah, you're fired. Can you hear us? Uh, I can't hear shit. <laughs> this <is> ridiculous. <laughs> what a handsome guy, man. Right? Isn't it great to just look at him? Yeah. It's so great. It's so weird. <laughs> great to just look at him. He sent, me that <laughs> he sent me that selfie and I played the lottery the same day and I won a thousand dollars. Wow. Alright, so I'm in the middle, I'm about to start up a new dynasty league. Right? Getting the itch. I just closed one down, so we've got some bandwidth to to hit another dynasty league. And I, I wanna drop some business one on one on y'all. Okay. So Gary Vee talks about this thing, jab, 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 right hook. It was the name of his one of his books, right? Jab, 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 right hook. So it's, it's basically like giving, giving, giving. You're jab, 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 jab. You're always giving to your audience. You're always giving to the people that follow you, right? You're giving them value. You're giving them a lot more than they give you, okay? So when you hit them with the right hook, the right hook is basically this ask, right? You're asking for them to do something for you. After you've given them a lot of value, you've built up this trust, this loyalty, and you're able to give them a lot of shit that they want, then you can ask. The people who don't make it, people are always asking like, you know, how much money do you make via Google AdSense? Uh, how do I set up my Patreon? It's like people that don't have an audience, and the reason you don't have an audience is because you haven't given value to an audience, right? You build up an audience by giving a lot of value over a long fucking period of time. You wanna start out the gate with a, without an audience but wanna make a Patreon, wrong way to do things. You're worried about how much money you're gonna make when you have 200 subscribers on YouTube, you're looking at the wrong things. 
after jabbing for years and years and years, you build up this audience and then you can write hook, right? We do that a lot more often now because we have the leverage to do so. We have a lot of different shows. We've got a bigger audience now. But this is one of the things where you realize what's valuable to your audience, right? You realize we've given out a lot of Dynasty content. We've given out a lot of free video content, whatever it may be, um, for people to get interested in, into Dynasty. So now I want to start this Dynasty League. And we've got 10 spots filled already. So it's myself, Tony, and a few other dudes that I give spots to that are like hardcore um, big dogs subscribers or audience members, dudes who are... Um, in the GOAT Patreon tier, a couple dudes who won some of the giveaways. So we've got two spots left over, right? And I know these are going to be very, very, very cherished spots to get. So I'm thinking, okay, we need to use this. We need to use this to our advantage to somehow, whatever it is, build a list. Um, not necessarily make money, but uh, somehow build our engagement with the audience. So I'm thinking, okay, we can do some sort of like... Um, some sort of giveaway where it's a contest and you have to you have to hit us back with like your funniest audition, a tryout video. But I'm thinking that's going to take too long. So what's what's something that people can give in exchange for entering into uh, get a chance to get a spot in the Dynasty League? Something quick, something simple, something they don't have to like pay for, something that's not going far out of the way. So I was like. All they have to do is leave a podcast rating and review, right? You see a lot of people on Twitter like, oh, do this, give away, do that, whatever. We'll give you like a free autographed jersey or some shit. And I'm thinking like this dynasty spot, one, is like one of the most valuable things in the world is access to people, right? And uh, as you start to build like more of a following, access to you, you, know, you don't you don't create the market for what like access to you costs, right? Like I can't start out a YouTube channel and say like access to me costs sixty dollars an hour, but I'm at the point where we built up a large enough audience to where I know that access to me in terms of like you know sitting down one on one with you for an hour is going to cost a lot of money. Being in a dynasty league with me would normally cost a lot of money. Like if I opened up spots and I was like the highest bidder, eleven like I could do this once a year where I'm like eleven people, the people who pay the most money get into a dynasty league with me. It's corny. I would never do that, but that's a possibility for us to make money. Um, so I know that like getting access to me or getting into a league with other people that are on a big bo big dogs team is a, a very valuable commodity. So I'm like, let me ask them to do something small. And this I consider this like a right hook, leaving a rating and review because it takes time out of the day for people to do that. So we hit our texting platform community where we have like 1,200 people on it. I'm about to send out an email uh, to our email list, which has like uh, 10 or 11,000 people on it. And all all I'm asking them to do leave a five star rating and a review on the podcast. And uh, they send a screenshot of that, and they're going to be entered into a chance to win one of the other two spots in it. So um, it's about knowing the value that you're giving to people. And I know that these spots are extremely, extremely valuable to a lot of people. A lot of people want them. So for them to just do something minimal like that uh, doesn't take a lot, but it's going to go a, a long way for us. Because I know, I think we had just over 500 ratings and reviews or something on the actual iTunes podcast app. And podcasting right now, the state of podcasting is, is a shit show. There's no organization to it. There's no actual like search engine optimization to it. There's no there's no anything um, right now. So you kind of got to like scrape and claw in order to move up the charts. And fantasy football, like podcasting is a huge part of the industry, right? That's how a lot of people know uh, other people within the industry because their podcast got popular. YouTube is starting to get a lot more popular. Video content's getting a lot more popular. But podcasting is really tough to grow because again, there's no search engine to it. It's not like YouTube where you type in, you know, running back rankings or whatever and you discover new podcasts and stuff it doesn't work like that so you need to transfer over the audience that you have that we have on youtube on the tech platform on email platforms over to podcasting this is a simple way for us to do that so i know i've gotten screenshots sent back of like over 50 probably we'll probably get like 100 to 200 new ratings and reviews which is a huge amount for us and that'll boost us up the rating board so my takeaway here is this like the jab 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 right hook theory thing is very, 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 very real. Don't be asking your audience more than you're giving. You should always give and give and give and give and give and understand what it is that they actually want from you in return. And when you can give that to them, that is when you hit them with the right hook and knock them motherfuckers out like Tyson. All right? Class dismissed. Right. I got to get some tricks. Tricks up the kids. I swear I lost mm. Well, you get to sleep, right? Yeah. All I did, I didn't feel like that. My body ached and I just slept. I've never felt an ache like that before. I was like, this is just like what old people feel like. Like, I, I know. Just just wake up. I literally, I probably slept. That's, that's the case. I'm pulling the plug at 60. For sure. <laughs> I'm pulling the plug at 29. So, I got about what? 
Nine more months? Seven more months? Make them good. What the fuck am I going to do with nine months? Fuck Felicity Hoffman? I don't know. What else is there to do? Go see the world. Go see the world? I live in New Jersey. I look like a traveler to you. I live in New Jersey. I've already seen the world. His world is right where he needs to be. That's it. That's it. Zach, you made a shot yet on this on this hoop? Made a couple. I'm sure. Not many. Julius. Who's winning the MVP? Jokic. Jokic, yeah. Really? Yeah. He's like minus 8,000. I'm pissed, man. I, made, I placed a bet on him last year. Like preseason at plus 8,000. the MVP? You know, it's really funny. I don't really know. His stats are good, but is he really... So, I mean, if like, I'm giving it to with, anybody... With the amount of talent in the league today? Like, I well, I, 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 I would pick Julius Randle. Curry. No, it's Steph Curry. Steph Curry or Julius You Curry. take Steph Curry off the Warriors. They're, they're they, the Warriors they, may, the they may win one game. The Warriors are the league. They're playing, but yeah. So technically, they shot base. Yeah. This is yeah. such a trap fucking game. Yeah, Tiz, you should come over for Sunday dinner one day. I, I would love that, bro. Yeah? I actually, yeah, 100%. That would be awesome. Huh? Your dad would be like the funniest Well, yeah, my dad would be interrogating you for a long time. <laughs> About what? It doesn't, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> be, being you. You got long hair. Why you got long hair? Huh? <laughs> he's actually originally from the Bronx. Okay. So he's been around. And, and he's been around the block. Yeah. And then he moved to uh, moved to Jersey when he was 18. And he stayed since. Uh, he's a miserable fuck. So. It's like a very <laughs> nasty old school Italian man. man. Like miserable fucks, like one be miserable fucks. He's not happy unless he's miserable. Yeah, that's that's, that's always the thing I never understand. It's, it's ridiculous. It's literally not happy. It's gonna be like a TJ McConnell 15 assist game. I'll tell him. I'll tell him good news. He'll find the bad and be happy about it. There we go. Oh. Alright. Uh, so yeah, you should come. Some raviolis, meatballs, garlic bread, whatever you want. Awesome. Whatever you want. You ever have any of that? I've ever had that rap I don't know if I've had like whole man shit. Just see his face. Really? Alright, yeah, you're gonna come over one day. You're gonna come over. We'll, we'll play it by you. Okay, okay. I, gotta, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta take that one in first. Right. When were you born? 95. May 24. Yeah. May 24? Yeah. My cancer anniversary. Did you cancer? Did I? Yeah. Hell yeah! When did that happen? Hell yeah! Everybody well, has cancer, baby! <laughs> Well, in about a week, it'll be 11 years. That was such an odd reaction <laughs> yeah. to that. Hell yeah, well, fucking kids, man. I don't know, I just figured it's like a... Yeah. You ain't cool. 11 years ago. Unless you get kids. Nah, and trust me, if you get it, it's not that bad. Was it pretty serious? Did you have to, like, get shit operated on or anything? Or, like, what happened? Chemo, seven months, radiation for a month. Oh, fuck. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. Sounds awful. Awesome. Yeah. Ah. We'll make the best out of it all, right? I got a make a wish too. Did you actually? Yeah, I yeah, did. What was your make a wish? Giants and chicken. Yeah, we'll yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I got kicked. I got kicked out of half the games, and I got my sideline passes revoked for me. But yeah, other than that, it was awesome. You might be the only make a wish kid to get his wish basically taken away. <laughs> well, in fairness to me, I asked for the tickets, not the sideline passes. Well, yeah, they gave you that. The sideline passes because the ticket, the, the wish was so cheap. Sideline passes came with it, and they threw me out after three games. Was never allowed back on the sideline. It was worth it. I won the Super Bowl the next year, so. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. That was pretty nice. It was nice. Yeah, well, it, was, it wasn't bad. I lost all my hair, came back red, so. 
I literally look the same. Terrible. I don't believe you. Your hair was not red before that. It was actually much redder. Oh, okay, okay. Right? You, you can probably pass for that. I also have some gel in it so it looks a little more brown. Yeah. But no, I, uh, yeah. Yeah. The stupid ginger Italian fuck. That's what I am. A miserable bastard. Do I like it? I used to hate it. It's fine. Hate it. Despise it. I also have freckles everywhere. Yeah. And now it's. Now it's kind of sexy. Yeah. Because you look at every redhead in the world, they're ugly as fuck. This is fairly true. Yeah, fairly true. I don't, I don't consider myself to be ugly. Yeah, redheads are kind of. I think I'm uh, kind of handsome. You're, you're, you're a decent oh, cute. Redheads are getting out there though with McVeigh and stuff like that. Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you Irish? Are you Italian? I'm 100% Italian. Well, red hair. So we're, we're gonna do a 23 and Me or whatever the no, we're not. ancestry doctor. No, we're not. One day uh, film it. No, we're not. It's <laughs> gonna ruin his life one day when he finds out he's like 35. No, we're not. Italians are like all of the like Dutch. All right. Well, if you, if you okay, well, if you, if you, if you all right, if you met my apparent father and his mother, my Your grandmother, why you know if we're gonna do this, maybe he's not really my father. Okay. My mother was 100 percent Sicilian. Okay. So that's probably where my my. Placingness comes from. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And my father was from Cesarica. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. Somewhere in Italy. Listen, if they're my biological parents, then I'm all Italian. If they're not, then I'm fucked. I just, I just don't know how you have red hair. I feel like red hair is like very Irish. Well, it's not even just the red hair. It's the very fair the skin and the blue eyes. Yeah. I think you guys should definitely 23 and you on the video. I'll fucking switch that on again. I, I think that's a good idea. I think that's a good idea. He finds out he's like 8% Italian. <laughs> do, you <laughs> you want me, do you want me to just kill myself? 57%? No, no, I still gotta eat that Sunday dinner before you do that. Oh, God. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough.